next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and paint all the pieces. Now when I say pieces, I'm talking the trunk lid, the two doors, the two fenders, and the hood. And then of course we got the cowling that we got to paint as well. What I'm doing right now is I am prepping up the inside of the trunk. Now this is the original factory paint on this trunk. And what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and use scotch brights to go ahead and prep that up. Since this is on the inside of the car, it's never going to see daylight. Uh, it's going to be seen very rarely. We won't have to go ahead and uh, sand it down like we were doing the outside of the car. But what we want to do is prep it up properly so our paint and our epoxy primer will stick and we won't have no problems. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. Scotch-Brite here and then I'll Scotch-Brite it all down all the edges and everywhere and then what I'll do is I'll come back with my gray Scotch-Brite repeat my process and then this will be ready for paint so as we're doing this I'd like to go ahead and mention that this is not a car restoration we are not restoring this vehicle all we're doing is freshening it up and we're cleaning the car up but we're going that extra mile to make sure that the car is painted inside and out so the color matches perfect. Um, if we were going to restore this to the magnitude of, let's say, uh, uh, automobile restoration, then we would probably sand this all down and then we would prime it and then re-sand it like we're doing the outside. But since this is not a restoration, and this is more of a makeover, kind of like what we're talking about here, we're going to go ahead and properly prep it so our paint will look very, very nice and new. And i got to say, this is one of the cleanest Chevelles that I have seen in probably 20 years. Uh, the owner of this car and the owner before him took very, very good care of his vehicle, and uh, it should last many, many years down the road. Uh, this is all original. None of these panels have been replaced. And it's just going to be a really, really, really nice, awesome automobile when we're done. Now, one more thing I'd like to mention. When you are working on something such as this, and it's upside down, and you're working on the inside, you want to be very careful not to push on it real hard, because this is a two-panel situation. And if you push real hard, what's going to happen is you're going to dent the outside of your deck lid. So what you want to do is basically lift up on it just like I'm doing here while you're sanding it. And what that's going to do, that's going to take the pressure off the center of it so we don't dent it on the outside. And then once it's prepped like that, what we'll do is we'll take our gray scotch bright and repeat our process. on now, uh, we're not going to paint the inside of these fenders, but what we are going to do, we're going to clean them up so we don't get uh, trash and debris blowing into our paint. So uh, once again, I'm taking my scotch bright, just like you see right here, and I'm scotch brighting the inside of the fenders, getting all of that dirt and that muck off of them. Now, uh, one thing you do want to do is protect yourself. I'm using leather gloves because I don't want to uh, cut my hands now. Uh, since we're going to go ahead and paint these off of the car, uh, I'm in the process right now of removing a piece of molding. And the only way that you can put this molding on the car is you have to have the fender off. So we're going to go ahead and take this molding off, and then once we paint the fenders, we'll put it back on the car, and it'll give it that nice clean look instead of having a tape line around the molding. 
The only problem we have getting these off is getting the right socket that actually fits it. And I could have sworn it was this one right here. Here it comes. And you don't want to lose these little clips right here, so make sure that when you take your moldings off, any type of molding that you're going to take off of the car, always put the screws back on to the clips. Like I said, this is not a restoration job, but it is a uh, upper scale makeover. So we want to make sure that we're going to do the customer right by doing everything we can. And this clip here is giving us a fucking hassle. But uh, yeah, there's your molding right there. Uh, we've been taping this off as we've been working on it. And now that uh, we finally got the fenders off and we're able to get inside there, we're going to go ahead and remove that. And then once we paint it, we'll put it back on. Um, we got a situation with one of the clips right here that is giving us a hassle. So uh, let me work on that. We're going to get the inside of this fender completely cleaned out. Uh, now that is for reasons of dust. Okay, You can see as I'm sanding it, you can see the dust that is inside these fenders. When you're doing a makeover like this, you want to make sure that you get rid of all of the dirt. Once I scotch bright the inside of the fender, I'll take it outside and I'll go ahead and wash it all off with the hose to make sure that it has been cleaned thoroughly. Now I'd like to point out in this area right in here, uh, if you can see this line right here that I'm pointing at, this is actually a new lower section. Uh, at one time in this car's life history, somebody replaced the lower part of this fender probably due to rust and, and corrosion. This is where uh, your fenders on this particular car style are going to rust because what happens is water runs down the fender and then it gets debris in there and trash and then it all uh, gathers up in this area right here and then it will rust the front of your fender out. I also noticed that they did a nice professional job on this due to the fact that they went ahead and drilled some holes out um, right here in this area so when that thing gets filled up with muck and water it has a, a way to breathe a, instead of getting stuck in there so whoever fixed that did a nice professional job and, and, and made it look uh, uh, presentable and professional all at the same time. So we can see that this car has been well taken care of the whole lifespan of the vehicle itself. Um, I would have never known that was replaced unless I would have stripped it down to bare metal. It was a shock to see that right there. And uh, the person that did that job did a top-notch quality job. And uh, it shows in the professionalism of looking on the outside of the fender and saying, Wow, I can't even tell that fucker was replaced. So i got to get this clip off. And then down the road we go. Uh, we'll repeat our process on the next fender. And, and, and we're moving along, we're getting her done, and you're learning how to do it right. We'll see you uh, down the road, and hopefully uh, one day soon this fucking thing will be done, and we'll be able to look at it and say, wow, what a fucking accomplishment I did all by myself. We'll see you later. We went ahead and pulled some of the parts in here. Now what we got, we got the fenders, the doors, and the cowl paneling. And we're going to go ahead and paint those. Now we went ahead and sanded those down to 600. We went through the same procedure that we went with on the vehicle itself. And so what we're going to do first, we're going to go ahead and apply our epoxy a primer. And then while I'm doing that, what uh, 972 is going to be doing, he's going to be color sanding the bottom of the vehicle. Now we're talking about the rocker panels. We're talking below this uh, reveal section right here. You can see where I taped that off. And then of course he's got to do the back part as well. Now this is a good tech tip right here because 972 isn't really the best color sand guy in the world. No. But you know the basics and uh, you know you're not going to burn through the clear. So what have we done to our vehicle to protect that you won't burn through the edges? What have we done? Put tape on it. The edges. That's right. And what I've done is I've taken some three quarter inch tape and I went ahead and put that on the very sharp edges of the vehicle just like you see here. Now that's a good tech tip for everybody out there that's restoring 
their car or possibly doing a muscle car makeover like we're doing to this Chevelle is that you want to take your three quarter inch tape and go on all the sharp edges of the car so when you sand it, color sand it, you aren't going to burn through the clear. So while I start painting the vehicle, uh, 972 Clown Guy is going to be color sanding. What are you going to use to start out with, 972 Fuck Off Guy? What are you using? 1500. Okay, can you get your sand block and all your sanding gear and show everybody what the fuck's going on here? Because you're only going to be doing the bottom for right now. Yeah. There's my 1500. So you got a piece of 1500, we got a wet sponge, and what else is in our bucket? Wet sponge, squeegee. Can you get one something out there, dude? Get the, okay, the sponge, sponge we know. What block, okay, you're going to be using that block. Yes. All right, so we're using a, a flexible rubber block, and what you're going to do is you're going to wrap that paper around there. Show everybody how that's done, please. Make sure the blue is right here. And on this block here, what did I tell you? You got to start right there. Start right here. And you always start on the blue side because that's the soft side, and that's the side you're going to be using the most. Yeah. That way, when you wrap it around, you'll be able to grab this end. Yeah. All right. Now, what are we trying to uh, what are we trying to accomplish here by wet sanding? What are we removing? Can I say it for you? Yeah, say it. Orange peel. Orange peel yeah. You got to get the orange peel out and the little maybe dust specks that dust might have specks, flown yeah. into it. Yeah. All right. Make it glassy. Feeling. You're gonna make it glassy feeling, but we're also gonna get rid of the orange peel. Let me see your sandpaper. I want to show everybody what orange peel is. If you look right here on this finish, you can see that that has a lot of orange peel. I'm gonna go ahead and dry sand that just to show everybody what orange peel is. And now, after I sanded it dry, you can see that all this orange peel effect, now what orange peel effect is, that's basically a replica of, if you had an orange in your hand, this is what orange peel is. So what we gotta do is take our 1500 grit, and we gotta sand until all the orange peel is gone. Now, how are you gonna inspect that to make sure that it's gone as you're sanding? No. No. Squeegee? Squeegee. Where's the squeegee at? Get the squeegee so we can show everybody. Okay, where are we at? I don't see it. Okay. Alright, so this is a rubber squeegee. Now, if you can go ahead and put some water up here, I'm going to show everybody this. Because we're going to go over the wet sanding procedure again, but I just want to show everybody because you're kind of a beginner at this. Okay, so let's say that we just sanded and we got water on it and we got to find out if we got our orange peel out. What you would do is take your squeegee like this and then you'd squeegee your water off and that would dry the area that you're sanding uh, by squeegeeing it just like this. And then you take the light, all right, and when he's saying light, because he's usually up on top, taking that light and walking with it to view to see if you've removed all of the imperfections in the orange peel. Right. Okay, but you can't do that down here. All right, you're not gonna be able to do that down there, so you're gonna have to rely on feel and squeegee. Let's get to work on that. We gotta tape those edges off. All right, let's get, so I already got it taped over here. Start over here, then work your way around to this side. You know what I want, don't fuck me around. So while he's doing that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk you through a spray procedure on how to spray your car and to make sure that you are gonna spray it properly. Uh, I couldn't show you the vehicle, there was not enough room in the paint booth to put the camera in there. And many of the body shop girls with us today, so she'll be able to go into the paint booth with us and paint uh, as we film. Or should I say, film as we paint. So let's start out with our epoxy primer, but before we do that, we've got to wipe everything down with wax and grease remover to make sure that our panels are nice, thoroughly clean to accept the paint that we are going to apply. We got many of the body shop girl over here today. She is block sanding, uh, wet sanding the car. Yeah. I'm good. How's that sanding going? Is it coming out? It's good. Now what are you using? What's going on? Well, right now I'm using 1200, just busting it down with 1200, and then we're going to go over it with the. Uh, okay, so we're using 1200 first. Is that the situation? Yep. And then once you hit it with 1200, then 15, then 3000. Absolutely. And then it'll have that custom mirror finish. 3000 we'll will be with the little jitterbug thingy. Jitterbug thing? You know the little jitterbug thing? No, center. I don't know. You don't know? There's a difference between a DA and a jitterbug. I'm not using the DA. I think we're DA. using the DA sander. 
Oh, you know, that little thing's not a jitterbug? No, that's a DA sander. Oh, okay. But, well, it's DA. Okay, so Minnie's out here doing that. When we get ready Whatever. to paint, she is going to be the camera girl inside the paint booth as we apply the paint to our pieces. Uh, but right now, she's busy sanding. How's it going down here, 972 clown? Fuck off, guy. It's good. Are we doing good, bud? Yeah. All right, how are we looking? Are you getting all that orange peel out? Yep, it's feeling like glass. Okay, that's what we want, right? Mm-hmm. All right, keep up the good work, buddy. And then once we get everything painted on the parts, the, the bolt-on parts, I will take you through a little procedure of wet sanding and color sanding and buffing those to get them to that mirror shine. But right now, uh, what we need to do is go through the procedures of the paint that we're going to use to paint our muscle car makeover and why it's important to use top-notch quality materials. So as we start out, now I'm not going to advertise for these companies because the corporation can go fuck off. Uh, you know, they're making billions of dollars while you and me are making pennies. Am I right, Minnie? Yes, please. Well, then why should I advertise for them? Nobody asked Are they you fucking to paying me to advertise for them? Nobody asked you to, but you know you don't even have to mention that part. Well, I, I do have to mention it because the corporation thinks they fucking own us and they don't. And I'm not advertising for the fucking cocksuckers, and that's the way it goes. Do what? I said, yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm glad you're on my side on that. Like, you really don't give a shit. I just don't think there's got to be hostility and there's got to be anger and frustration because that's how you get rid of it. Was that funny, 972? All right, so uh, if there's people out there that know labels, you know, we'll, we'll go with the labels and if you can figure it out, that's what I'm using. But I will mention that this is top notch, 100% high quality shit we're going with. Now, you get what you pay for. All right. So you see there, she just told you the honest truth. So what we so got even here. Though it's, even though it's the corporation, you still got to use Well, that's why I'm telling you, they're fucking you. Why do they have to be higher than the other guy? Because they're the corporation, because it's them? The other corporation is just it's still a corporation. They're just smaller. Well, OK, I think we talked enough about that. We're not on cork, baby, C-O-R-C, Cusarama Cafe oh, here. I just want to start arguing. All right, so what we're doing is once we have primed it, prepped it, remember I told you prep job is the most important prep job of the fucking paint job. If your prep job ain't right, your paint job ain't going to be right. So we know that's okay. So what we got to do now is we got to go through the procedures of painting. Now the first thing I'm going to do, and I did the same thing on the car back there, is that we are going to go ahead and put a full wet coat of epoxy primer on it. Now, this is the situation. To put that full wet coat on, you are not going to put it down like paint. You are not going to stay there and go real super slow. When I say a wet coat, I'm talking a fast moving wet coat. I'm going to show you in the paint booth when we do that. But the real deal is, is you got to move fast, but you got to make sure that the whole surface is covered. If you stay on the uh, uh, surface too long with your epoxy primer, what's going to happen is it's going to get orange peel in it because this epoxy primer and every other epoxy primer that you're going to use, if it's real good stuff, does not require any reducer. Because when you put reducer in it, that's when it thins it down and it levels out better. But we don't want to do that on this. We want to go straight with 100% uh, epoxy primer and we want to make sure that we're using top quality products. Now this is our epoxy primer right here. I'm using gray on this car. And then this is our hardener. Now, the hardener that I'm using, this is called a quick hardener. It's a fast catalyst hardener. That means that it's ready to spray right out of the can once you mix it up. Just like 2K primer, for instance. Now, another thing about epoxy primer, it's non-sanding. You cannot sand it. If you get a little small run in it while you're putting it on there, wait 45 minutes to one hour, come back with some 400 wet, and minutely block that out. Make sure you use some water, but contain the area. So, now I'm talking after you put your epoxy primer on it, you might get some imperfections. You want to contain the area. I think I've already showed you that. I think I already showed that. Didn't we go in the paint booth and I showed that to him? Yeah. 972, fuck off guy. Yeah. Okay, we already showed you. So, if you run into that problem, you want to minutely be careful using your 400, just a small piece, and just getting it out. Nibbing it is what we would call it. Now, they also make another hardener. What's up, 972? Are you listening to this? Are you learning anything? 
Okay, make sure you get that rocker panel real good, bud. Okay, this here is the quick hardener that once you mix it, it's ready to spray. Most epoxy primers that you use on the market, this is the only one I know that you can mix and spray. It's a mix and spray deal. You have to wait 30 to 45 minutes for it to activate. That means once you mix it together, from the time that it's mixed, you got to wait at least 30 minutes before you spray it on. If you don't wait, what's going to happen is the epoxy primer will flake off. Remember, the epoxy primer is your very first coat of paint that you're putting on. You don't want no flaking going on on that action. So what we're going to do with our epoxy primer is we are going to go ahead and mix it. Now, you want to go by the manufacturer's uh, ideal mixing system here. I believe this is a 4 to 1 uh, situation. No, this is actually a 2 to 1. All right, two to one mix. So if you were going to buy a gallon of this, all right, if you were going to buy a gallon of this primer, you would have to buy two quarts of hardener because it's a two to one mix. Try to get as accurate as you can on mixing the uh, primer. And another thing, make sure that it's shaken up very, very well and mixed properly before you pour it out of the can. I think I'm covering everything here, don't you? 972 guy. Hello. How about you, Manny? Well, tell them that the cups will show you how to mix. Okay, the cup is going to show them. Yes, I was going to get to that. I'm just asking, have I forgot anything, Manny, the body shop girl? No. Okay. Okay, Manny brought up a good point there. Uh, this is a mixing cup. This is a cup that you can get at your uh, paint and body supply store, possibly maybe at Home Depot and Lowe's sell these as well. Uh, but what you got here, you got your mixing system right here on the uh, side of the cup. All the ratios are already on there. Okay. All the ratios are on there. What else? We got the one that's right for you. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the two to one here, and we're going to come way over here, one to one. Here's two to one. Uh, I believe that's two to one right there. So you'll want to follow those instructions, but when it's two to one, I mean, do you really have to measure it? I mean, that's pretty common sense. It would take uh, this much fucking primer and then that much. Do you see what I'm saying? Well, that's all in how good a cook you are, you know? Some people... A cook? Like, are you talking like what? Well, you know, like when you use a recipe when you're... Cooking. Breaking Bad cooking or... No. What the fuck are we talking cooking here? Who's cooking what? Well, sort of. I mean, you are mixing chemicals after all, people. Okay. So, when I cook, I'm sorry, mix my cook up, I usually start out with the small one first. Because that way the hardener, there's always going to be more of this than there is of the hardener. So we go ahead, take our cup, and then we're going to find the two to one. We'll go ahead and follow this. And you just follow the twos right there and go with it. So we're going to come right up to here. This will be two. Right there, a little bit more for for good measure and you know, making sure it's good. And then we're going to take our primer after we have mixed it up thoroughly and then we'll go ahead and add that to our mix. Now, you don't want to go past this line on your cup. This is important. All right, this is not a full court up to here. It's a full court right to here. I'm going to put that back down. It's getting ready to slip. Now. Once we've done that, we'll go ahead and mix it up. This is getting a little boring now because, you know, I'm actually taking through the process of this. And then once it's mixed up thoroughly, we're ready to go ahead and spray this. Now, once again, I want to mention that a lot of these epoxy primers, you have to wait uh, 30 minutes before you use them. This primer, you don't have to. Let's get in the paint booth. Let's get this primer on there. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about, uh, a wet coat of epoxy primer. So watch real close. And we'll get Minnie in there uh, to be the camera girl. Do you have... Okay, you're going to have to take all those overalls and shit off. You can't go in the paint booth with those. There's dust all over them, probably. That's all we need to do is contaminate that because you're cold. Okay, why are you wearing overalls then? Because I don't want to get soaked with wet. I'm wet sanding. Oh, okay. That's good. Duh! That's a good excuse. That's why you got it. Oh, so hold on a minute. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, hold on a second. So you're telling me you got overalls on so you don't get wet. What about your hat? What's that for? Keep my hair. Why do you have a snow cap hat on your head? To keep my hair back. To keep your hair back? 
If you, I bet if you take that off, you got your hair thing in your hair. So if you're keeping your hair back, why don't you have a hair tie? Because my hair's okay, short. It's cold out, baby. Just admit it. Just short. admit that you're uh, thin boned. Okay, my just short. but just admit you're thin boned and, and you get real cold easy. I get real cold. Okay. Because I don't see Dylan over here with a coat on. Does it feel cold to you, Dylan? Oh nippy. Get to work, bud. Get to work. Okay, the paint booth will be running. I won't be able to talk. Many might be able to do a little commentating for us. As we paint uh, and what we're doing, Minnie, the body shop girl, just to let you know, we're putting a nice wet coat of epoxy primer on, so you might be able to do a little professional body shop girl commentating on that subject, if you can. Do you think you'd be able to? Probably not. Uh, you can't wear your hat in there either. Why? Because it's got lint in it, and it'll get into the paint. All right, let's get in the paint booth. Let's get this painted. Okay, here we are. Pete's getting ready to shoot some primer. And this is a one-shot deal because you only put one coat on. So it needs to be a good wet coat. And you don't want to go too fast. Make sure your air is adjusted before you get started. Bug in there or what? There's a bug in there. That's okay. 
So what we just did is we went ahead and applied uh, a full wet coat of epoxy, probably just like Minnie told you. I don't know what the fuck she was saying, but hopefully it made sense. And then once we let that dry, it's going to take approximately what? In this weather, probably an hour and a half, an hour. At least, because it is cold. Okay, we might not even paint it today. I don't know. Depends on what the weather's going to do. But at least it's ready to paint. And when we come back, we're going to start applying our paint. I'm going to show you the techniques and how to set your gun right before you start painting. We'll be using the HVLP gun on that. Don't show any fucking names. Thank Oops. you. Here, show the picture. There you go. We'll be using an HVLP gun on that to apply our paint, but we're going to use a conventional gun to apply our clear. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. We got Minnie the Body Shop Girl behind us. We got uh, 972 uh, Guy. What's going on, bud? How's it looking? It's good. Okay. Almost done. Color sanding and hopefully making it look good. Almost done. You almost done? How's that rocker looking? Minnie's going to check it, dude. Okay. One more thing I want to tell you is, once you mix up your epoxy primer, I went ahead and mixed a full quart just to show you how to mix up the ratios. But uh, if you have any epoxy primer left over, anything that you uh, that requires a hardener and anything that requires a catalyst, you cannot keep. It's trash. So throw it away. Make sure that you clean your gun out thoroughly. And uh, ready for the next job. I got to go. See you later. Why? Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.